Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're taking a good hard squint at the Huawei Mate 50 Pro, a big old bugger boasting some proper next gen camera tech. Gonna do you an unboxing and full hands on review as well, check out that camera tech and also show you how to get some Google apps on this bloody thing as well to make it a bit more lovely. And for more on the latest and greatest tech please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell, cheers! So first, what is in that box besides of course the Huawei Mate 50 Pro? Oh well, you've got yourself one power adapter, 66 watts no less, our old friendly USB cable, and a lovely bit of condom case action as well with an enormous orifice cut out of it to uh, house that space ring. And that's everything you'll find in here, so now let's actually check out the phone. Now, I really hope you like them big because the Huawei Mate 50 Pro is an absolute Godzilla sized smartphone. It's a 6.74 inch, it weighs over 200 grams. It may be an absolute beast, but at least that display is surrounded by very skinny bezels, so it's slimmed down as much as possible. And that display actually curves ever so slightly around the edges, so if you're not a fan of that, well, bam. And you do get a big fat moustache notch up top on the Huawei Mate 50 Pro's display as well. Not quite as horrendous as the regular iPhone notch, but still pretty bad. In fact, it's all the more obvious when you use the default Mate 50 Pro wallpaper, which I'm not really sure what it is. It kind of looks like somebody's ripped Donald Trump's wig off and is flapping it about in the wind. Now if you stump up a bit extra for the super bright orange version of this Huawei blower, apparently that display is coated in the very fancy sounding Kunlun glass. Kunlun glass. Which is apparently 10 times more durable than the standard glass which you get on the silver and the black models. That's according to Huawei anyway, but at least they bung a pre-installed screen protector on the Mate 50 Pro. And then if we flip this bad boy around, the silver model and the black model come with a glass back res. Again, if you stump up a bit extra for that fancy orange version, you get a bit of vegan leather action. And I've got to say, I really like the look of this glass version. Do you, do you like it, mate? I'm just trying to, trying to shoot a video, mate. As I was saying, very sleek and simple design, really. But of course, it is dominated around the arse end by the space ring camera housing which frankly is absolutely chuffing enormous. And yes, it does jut quite far out of that back end as well. But the good news is rest this Huawei blower on a desk or a table or whatever, and it does actually stay pretty stable when you're poking and prodding it. And all the different versions of the Huawei Mate 50 Pro are apparently IP68 water and dust resistant, but apparently again, that orange version is slightly superior to its siblings. It can go a little bit deeper underwater. So now let's check out the software and unfortunately once again it's not Google's Android OS on here, it is Huawei's very own Emotion UI version 13, which means that it does come with bugger all Google services as standard. Oh you just, you just dig right in there mate, Jesus Christ, let's just turn this camera this way a bit. You do of course have Huawei's app gallery on here instead of the Google Play Store and this isn't as well stocked unfortunately, but it's getting better with every passing year. You've got some big names on here, the likes of TikTok. You've got some alternatives to Google's own apps like the Opera browser. And stuff like Petal Maps is pretty good these days. And the Petal Search is pretty good for finding any apps that you can't locate on the app gallery. So for instance, type in Netflix. And this will then point you towards an APK file from a trusted source, the likes of App Parks. But as always, you've got to be careful when downloading APKs. Just make sure you don't get anything dodgy on there. And then there you go, a bit of Netflix running on the Huawei Mate 50 Pro, lovely stuff. But if you find you really can't live without that Google goodness, well definitely check out Gbox, which is a third party app that you can download from gboxlab.com. This actually serves up full Google Play Store access and allows you to download and use most of the usual apps currently not found on Huawei's own app market. So you'll find versions of all of Google's standard stuff and everything else that you know and love. However, do not expect them all to function completely 100% as they would on an Android device. So for instance, I've downloaded Google Chrome, but as you can see there, it keeps crashing constantly. And also I can't get Google Podcasts to work, unfortunately, because it keeps telling me to install the Google app. But when you click install, it doesn't actually allow you to do that. On the flip side, I've had bugger all hassle with Gmail, the likes of Deezer, Crunchyroll, Disney Plus, they all run absolutely fine as well. As for a motion UI, well, it's the same Amui we know and love. You've got the lights of the apps tray and everything to hide your bits away in. You've got the assistant feed rather than the Google Discover feed if you swipe this way. Although for some reason, none of the news images actually want to refresh for me. And if you swipe down from the top, you've got the notifications over on the left edge. Otherwise, if you swipe from the right edge, you've got the control panel. Same as a lot of other Chinese launches these days. This offers a vast variety of toggles you can play about with. You've got media controls, etc. Have a peruse of the settings. You've got lots of customization options in there, the usual theme, and you can piddle about with the always on display. 
the usual selection of very sappy mantras. Thankfully you can customise these to uh, fit your British mentality. And I do really like some of the arty farty ones, got some cool stuff in there. And you've got those stackable widgets now as well, so just pinch on the desktop, go to Service Widgets, drag a couple onto the screen that are the same size, so for instance the weather one and a bit of the camera gallery. And if you put one on top of the other, they will become a stackable widget. It's just a neat and tidy way of making sure your desktops aren't too cluttered. Just a quick swipe, as you can see, you can flick between them. You've got the usual smart folders and everything as well. All the usual AMUI features packed in there. So as long as you don't mind the lack of dedicated Google integration, then it's all good. Still not a massive fan of that Celia Assistant, though I've got to say, not a patch on the alternative options. Hey Celia, when is England playing France in the World Cup? I found no results. Awesome. What's more useful, you or a sack full of rancid turnips? Civilise you, me and him. Good life depends on everyone. What the f*** are you on about? Anyhow, turning our attention to security, you've got lots of great features packed on the Mate 50 Pro. Plenty of encryption options, you can lock away apps so only you can use them. And one of the benefits of that enormous friggin' notch up top is the fact you've got proper 3D facial recognition. And this is usually nice and swift, certainly does the job nicely. I rarely find it fails, even in very, very low light. And in addition to that, unlike the iPhones, you do have an in-display fingerprint sensor as well, which is wadged quite low down on that display, so it is a little bit of a stretch, but not too horrendous. And again, nice and responsive, nice and dependable, even though it is just an optical scanner. And while I do like to have a bit of a moan about enormous smartphones these days, there's no denying that 6.74 inch OLED panel is an absolute beauty. It's big, but those pictures are still nice and crisp thanks to the 2616 by 1212 pixel resolution. Even in the default display settings where it's set to the normal colour mode rather than vivid, I still found that those colours were nice and punchy. You got those deep blacks, you got that sharp contrast, you got the HDR streaming support as well. So like all premium flagship smartphone panels these days, it is a proper eye pleaser. And you've also got yourself a stereo speaker setup here on the Huawei Mate 50 Pro as well. And it is proper good audio as well. Let's boost up that volume. And, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. It's not the absolute loudest audio output from a stereo speaker that I've heard on a recent flagship smartphones, but certainly loud enough so you can hear what is going on when you are just watching a bit of YouTube, even in a pretty noisy household. And the audio quality stays strong even when you bump it all the way up to those maximum levels. Of course, as usual, no headphone jack here, but I've had no issues whatsoever when I've been streaming music over a bit of Bluetooth to speakers or headphones. Now, powering the Huawei Mate 50 Pro, you've got Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset. Huawei has moved away from its old Kirin chipsets of yesteryear. So sadly, not the latest, freshest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, because that wasn't officially unveiled until the Huawei Mate 50 Pro was already launched. But no real worries, because the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is still a very capable handset, super beefy and energy efficient to boot. So you'll have no troubles whatsoever playing the many awesome games available on Huawei's app gallery, including Crazy Demon Hero. What the f*** is that? Okay, a bit of an unusual start. Um, not exactly loving the title screen, but let's give it a go. Alright, so I'm a deer, apparently. Let's have a little prance over this way. Oh, should probably be careful with all these cars knocking about. Oh, bugger. Am I still alive? My head appears to be in the cement. Oh dear, he's not in a good way. Oh, there we go. Back to life. Hooray. How oh, bollocks. Bloody hell, look how high you can jump. This dude has snorted all of the deer crack. I do love how the mopeds are going by with literally nobody on them. And I do love how ads just randomly pop up and balk the entire experience. Alright, so let's maybe try a bit of Grand Theft City instead, which doesn't at all sound like a god-awful rip-off. Is that money? Oh, friggin' awesome. It's found $500 just lying there. Alright, here. I've at it. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. Now that is a wrestling move and a half. Bike. Yeah. There you go. Oh, bollocks. Anyway, yes, all of these games play wonderfully. And it's good news on the battery front as well, because you've got a 4,700 milliamp hour capacity cell crammed inside of that gorgeous chassis. And this will happily keep you going all day, no worries. I used the Huawei Mate 50 Pro as my handset all day yesterday and absolutely no issues whatsoever. Even with plenty of screen on time, I used that camera a lot, including shooting lots of video in and around the new Nothing store in London. Definitely go check out my video of that which went live last Friday. Yeah, plenty of audio streaming and video streaming and it wasn't even close to running out come the end of that day. 
And the Mate 50 Pro doesn't hang about when you're charging it back up as well. You've got 66 watt wide charger and you've also got 50 watt wireless charging plus the usual reverse wireless charging support on top. Now one of the highlights of any Huawei smartphone is the camera tech and what you've got housed in this space ring monstrosity right here is a 50 megapixel primary sensor with optical image stabilization. And the big whoop here on the Mate 50 Pro is the fact that you've got a mechanical aperture for that primary shooter, which we can demonstrate if we hop into the Pro mode. You've got 10 different f-stops that you can play around with here, all the way from f1.4, which is great for low light shots and a good bit of bokeh action, all the way up to f4. Otherwise, you can simply leave it on auto if you want to, and if you're in the standard regular photo shooting mode, then it will be automatically handled for you as well. And here's a selection of sample shots that I snapped with the Huawei Mate 50 Pro my first couple of days with it, and absolutely gorgeous results, especially in strong light. Lots of fine detail packed in there, like the poppy colours that really shine through on more vivid subjects. It's your situations, not a problem, the Mate 50 Pro will not foul its pants. But it's the low light results where Huawei usually shines and it's right up there with the pixels in terms of capturing lots of finer details even in quite testing conditions without bringing in lots of horrible ugly grain and the rest. And the Huawei Mate 50 Pro also gives you the option of a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter if you want to fit a bit more into frame. This is also used for macro photography if that's your bag and the results are pretty standard. And then last up, you've got yourself a 64 megapixel telephoto lens with 3.5 times optical zoom. And with this, you can get really up close and personal with any kind of subject. It's really helpful for shooting cats and kids and other things that don't want to be bothered as they're, you know, playing or fighting or whatever else. And it certainly is one of the better telephoto shooters that I've tested lately, right up there with the likes of Google's Pixel 7 Pro. You've got all the usual camera modes you would expect, like so the portrait mode, the pro mode, of course, we've already touched upon. And if you go to more, lots more stuffed in there, including a high res mode, if you do want to shoot 50 megapixel images. And of course, a video mode, which allows you to shoot up to 4K resolution footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second. There's no 8K option on here, unlike some rivals. And in lower light, the Mate 50 Pro isn't quite as good as some of the very best ones out there, like the Oppo Find X5 Pro. But generally, footage does look nice, audio's nice and clean, stabilization's good as well. And then, last up, if we flip around to the front facing camera, it's a 13 megapixel shooter with the time of flight lens there as well for the likes of the 3D face and lock. And again, whether you're snapping your mug in bright daylight or things are a bit dim and dingy, the Mate 50 Pro will keep up no worries. And that right there, in a lovely little nutshell, kiddies, is the fresh new Huawei Mate 50 Pro. Now, are you tempted by it, despite the fact you haven't got those Google services on there? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.